Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about commonly missed investment property tax deductions. Uh, Of real interest was a media release by the ATO uh, earlier in April, in April 2019, this month. They said they're going to double the amount of audits of property investor tax returns. So if you've got uh, rental properties and so forth as an individual, uh, you can expect greater scrutiny of your tax returns. Um, Essentially, uh, the ATO released uh, some data that says around 80% of uh, tax returns have errors in them. Uh, So that's really sort of saying four out of five people that get an audit uh, end up with a a higher tax bill. Um, And they've quoted some uh, examples in the media release uh, where a taxpayer was penalised by $12,000 for overclaiming deductions on their holidays. Another one, uh, another taxpayer had to pay $5,500 back uh, because they didn't apportion their rental interest deduction uh, correctly. And uh, interest deductions uh, obviously make up, you know, the, the largest, typically the largest deductible expense. And that's the one that gets the most amount of scrutiny. So making sure you have your loans uh, correctly structured uh, so that your deductions are watertight uh, and you don't really leave any room for the ATO uh, to argue otherwise. And uh, the ATO is getting data feeds. It gets data feeds um, from lots of uh, different sources, including financial institutions, so banks and so forth, um, state revenue offices. So when titles are, are lodged, uh, they'll get uh, feeds to tell them about property transactions, uh, rental bond uh, from all states and territories, um, online booking platforms. So that's particularly for um, for holiday houses and uh, short let properties and so forth and so they'll get all these data feeds from these different sources and that's the way they're going to uh, you, you know pick and identify the taxpayers that they want to audit. Um, so I thought it was a good juncture to uh, talk about what are some of the missed property uh, tax deductions that we see uh, when putting returns together for clients that have uh, either used another accountant or if they're mortgage broking clients and we get to see their tax returns, what are some of the the obvious um, missing deductions? Uh, So the first one is depreciation, uh, depreciation schedules and so forth. Um, Obviously that doesn't apply or applies to a lesser extent uh, given the new depreciation rules that came in uh, last year uh, for for property that was recently acquired. But, you know, if you've had property for, uh, for, owned property for a few years, uh, good chance you would have been able to uh, go and pay a quantity survey to put a depreciation report together. Uh, and it's a, non-ta- a non-cash flow deduction, right? So there's no out-of-pocket cost. It's something that goes on your tax return, saves you money. So it's a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, number two is uh, interest. Uh, I guess related to my commentary just about the ATO audits and so forth. Um, but if you haven't structured your loans correctly or you've got mixed purposes in uh, different loans, uh, sometimes that can um, that can create problems and uh, compromise the deduct- deductibility of the expenses. So making sure you've got your loan structured correctly is really critical. Number three, uh, statement of adjustments. So when you go and buy a property, typically there'll be some adjustments between the purchaser and vendor uh, for expenses that have been paid uh, by the vendor that that go beyond the settlement date. So things like council rates, for example, uh, if they've paid a full year's worth of rates, there'll be an adjustment for the period uh, for which they no longer own that property. Uh, and you need to pick that expense up uh, in that particular year to, to claim a, a deduction. So if you've purchased property in the last few years, uh, just making sure that your accountant has picked those things up is important. Uh, borrowing expenses, uh, so any uh, fees in excess of $2,000 uh, should be written off uh, either over five years or the term of the loan if it's shorter than five years. Uh, so most mortgages are 30 years, 25 or 30 year mortgages, so really five years is the answer. Uh, of particular note here is mortgage insurance, lender's mortgage insurance typically uh, is almost always over $2,000 in terms of a cost. 
Um, and so therefore you write, that even though you might have capitalised that onto loans, you haven't paid cash for it, you've borrowed it, you can still claim it as a, a tax deduction. So um, you, you write that off over five years. If you went and then refinance that loan, this is a critical one, if you went and refinance the loan, uh, you can then write off the full cost in that particular year. So, you know, if you went and purchased a property three years ago, for instance, borrowed 90%, paid for mortgage insurance, and then you went and refinanced that loan this year, so three years later, uh, this year you can claim that full uh, cost of mortgage insurance. And these sorts of things aren't, um, you know, sometimes quite often accounts will miss these uh, things and they can have a, a pretty significant impact on your overall tax pay- payable. Uh, the last comment would be uh, uh, submitting what's called a, a PAYG variation, withholding variation, which essentially uh, is a form that you give to your employer to tell them to take le- less money out of your – deduct less tax from your salary each uh, pay run, each fortnight or whatever it might be. Uh, and you can do that if you expect uh, to receive uh, a refund at the end of the year. So um, instead of having to wait, the end of the year to get a, a large refund you know you can help your cash flow uh, over the year by um, uh, paying less tax from your salary uh, from, from each pay cycle and that would be uh, really advantageous for people that have a reasonable amount of non-deductible debt because it gives you more cash to put into your offset account uh, to reduce your non-deductible interest expense uh, some people like the full savings element of receiving a, uh, a big refund check at the end of the year, it's been a long time since I've received a tax refund, so uh, so I can uh, certainly identify with that. So there are just a few examples. Uh, what I will do is put a, a link, or there's a link in the show notes, to a, a tax deduction checklist that we've prepared for property investors. So what I would suggest is just run your eye down that uh, list to identify whether Uh, you might need to uh, make any adjustments to uh, previous or current tax returns in order to uh, enjoy the full benefit of those deductions. Uh, So that's it for this week, uh, a a short week because of Anzac Day and Easter. Uh, But that's it for this week and until next week, bye for now.